So now that we've covered a broad overview and look at the female reproductive organs, we're going to now be looking more so at the process, at the function associated with female reproduction, and that's going to begin by looking at oogenesis. So we'll entitle this next flowchart oogenesis 1. And in the next two flowcharts, we'll be covering the idea of how an egg, a mature egg, is formed within the female reproductive system. So in order to begin, we're going to actually start at the same point that we start with in the male spermatogenesis side. It's actually going to be referred to as the primordial germ cells. And that's our first point of oogenesis. So what we want to keep in mind right now is that we have to turn an initially diploid cell state, primordial germ cells are initially diploid, into a haploid cell state because we want to create a gamete. We want to create an oocyte. And that's what we'll do throughout this oogenesis process, just like we did in the spermatogenesis process. So primordial germ cells are our first point of, the, of starting, let's say, for this process. And these are primarily going to be seen in a developing female embryo. So in a DEV for developing female embryo. So this is where most of the primordial germ cells start off as. Now, as this female embryo, as a female, basically a baby girl is developing within the womb, they're developing their primordial germ cells as well. These primordial germ cells will continue to develop. They will develop even more so via the process of mitosis. They will grow and they will have some more development. So some more mitosis, some more development will then change their form. They will become uh, and turn into oogonium. Oogonium is the plural for oogonia, which would be just the singular. And oogonium are going to be uh, a little bit more mature egg cells. But they're not necessarily there just yet. They're still actually going to be diploid. Oogonium, and these are going to be specifically, again, also formed during embryonic development. So let's write that down. Formed during embryonic DEV for development. And in addition, they're actually going to be all going to be formed sort of together. In essence, what we're saying is that the female that's eventually going to be born as a female baby girl is going to have all of the oogonium that she will need for the rest of her life. All of the development happens embryonically. So what we can basically state is that there's going to be no new, no new formation after birth. She will not, after birth, make any more oogonium. She will be born with all of them that are necessary for the rest of her life. This is different. Why is this different than males? Males have a continuous, lifelong process of spermatogenesis. Remember, it took 65 to 95 days, and we also stated it was a continuous process. This is not the same case. Here, we're going to have all of these sort of starting cells that a, a female needs to make eventually a mature egg cell are going to be given to her upon birth, and she will not make any more after that. She will just develop those that are given to her even further. So let's do that. Let's develop these even further after birth. So let's say we go through some more mitosis, and with mitosis always comes some more development. These oogonium will then form into primary oocytes. So they will turn into a primary oocyte. Here, we are still actually in the diploid stage, but now what we're going to basically be stating is that these two structures are going to be primarily seen and developing embryonically. So I would say that these two structures are part of embryonic development more so than anything. And then later, I would say that this is going to be sort of the per point at which where we have birth. Upon birth, a female will have primary oocytes, many primary oocytes within her, within her ovaries specifically because that's the site of oogenesis. And these primary oocytes will begin meiosis. That's going to be their first step once the, the, let's say, this young girl has been born, once this infant is born, they will begin meiosis. But what's going to happen is that the meiosis will actually stop. It will be arrested. That's the phrase for stopping meiosis or stopping a process in biology. It will be arrested at a specific meiotic phase called prophase 1. So this meiosis is just going to be stopped at a certain point. And there's a reason for this. What we have to understand is that a female will initially be born with all of the egg cells that she will carry for the rest of her life. 
So we can state that a female is born with about one to two million, one to two million primary oocytes. Now, she's born with these primary oocytes because she developed mitotically and embryonically from a primordial germ cell. They developed from primordial germ cells to oogonium to then, upon birth, primary oocytes. So these are all going to be there the moment that this young infant girl is born. But what's going to happen is as she reaches and achieves sexual maturity, so that's our key here, we have to reach sexual maturity. Once we are at the point of sexual maturity, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, the sort of start of puberty and the completion of puberty, what we're going to notice is that there's only going to be about 200,000 that remain. So that's basically going to be 200,000 capable egg cells that are within the female, and this will never change because, again, no new formation after birth. 200,000 is basically what we stay with and start with after sexual maturity. And what we notice also is this idea of dormancy in primary oocytes. Primary oocytes, therefore, we can state, remain dormant. They remain dormant because they're arrested at prophase 1 until a certain point in time of the female's life. And that's going to be puberty. And this is where we sort of have sexual maturity show itself again. Remaining dormant until puberty is because of the fact that sexual maturity hasn't been achieved. What's going to happen is once sexual maturity has been achieved or is, begun, is, beginning, is beginning its process within the female body, you're going to have hormones. Hormones are going to be uh, very much well produced during puberty. And what's going to happen is sexual maturity. Hormones are going to act on them. What do we mean by them? Hormones will act on the primary oocyte and will tell it, hey, I noticed that you are in a dormant stage. We are actually trying to reach sexual maturity as a human female organism. So these hormones, these messages are going to say, hey, you should not be dormant anymore. You need to become sexually mature. You need to become a sexually mature oocyte. You need to become an oocyte that's functional and that can be fertilized. And so these hormones tell the primary oocyte to continue meiosis, to complete meiosis 1. This is all going to happen at puberty. And upon completing meiosis 1, the hormones actually are then going to arrest. The actual primary oocyte will actually be arrested at metaphase 2. So now there's another point at which where we arrest this development. There's a specific reasoning for this, as we'll see a little bit later. And now we have another arresting stage. And so overall, what we want to sort of notice right now is the fact that we have this development. We have this sort of given development at birth. We have a little bit more development upon reaching sexual maturity, upon the age of puberty. And all of this is going to be sort of occurring within a structure called a follicle. So each primary oocyte, each primary oocyte is within a follicle structure. And what we're going to see in the next video and in the conclusion of oogenesis, this follicle structure is what's going to guide the rest of this oogenetic process of this birth of a true and ready Spur, a true and ready egg cell that can be fertilized because right now we really aren't there just yet we're developing we're getting there we have to eventually get to the stage of a secondary oocyte and that's what we'll do in the next video and complete let's say the oogenesis process